Hey everyone, it's Javi here, and this is the third video of my series all about learning how to use Next.js to build a simple blog website. In this video, we're going to be adding some blog post data to our app, and we're gonna be showcasing part of it on our homepage through a pre-rendering method called static generation. If you'll recall in the last video, what we did is we added an image to our website. We did some global and component specific CSS styling, and we also played a bit with the metadata of our pages. And in this video, we're going to be adding some blog post data to our application, and we are going to be rendering bits of it in the home page here through a pre-rendering method called static generation. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi, and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles, and practices to help you build digital products and bring your ideas to life. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, don't forget to hit subscribe. So let's get started. By default, Next.js pre-renders every page for better performance in SEO. Static generation is one of the two pre-rendering methods that come in Next.js. And what it does is that it renders the HTML data at build time. If you have a website or an application, like a personal blog in this case, where you know that you can preload all the data in advance, then static generation is a great way to offer performance on both the loading and the navigating of your pages. In our blog example, we're gonna be using static generation to preload all the blog data when the user will be landing on the homepage. So first things first, let's add the blog data. The first thing that we have to set up is define where the blog data is going to live. So in order to do that, let's head over to our VS Code, I have our project here loaded up already. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the folder button here and we're gonna call this posts. Now, inside this post folder, we're gonna load two markdown files, right? So these, these files are already within the, the learn documentation here for Next.js. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this for both of these. So we're gonna have one file that is going to be about pre-rendering, so a blog post about pre-rendering. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that file inside our post folder. So just copy pasting the, the file name there. And now I'm just gonna copy paste the contents of this one just right here. And as you can see, this is simple markdown content. And at the very top, there is a section for the metadata that we will be referencing in our homepage. So very simple file structure here. And now we're gonna go ahead and create the second one, which is gonna be about static generation and server-side rendering. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another file here, just like so, and gonna copy paste the content that has a very similar structure to the one we just created before. So I hit save and just like that, we now have two markdown files that are associated to our blog post data. Now that we have the markdown data in our application, we need a way to parse it in a way that we can leverage the bits of information that are gonna be helpful for us to showcase on our homepage. For that particular purpose, we're going to be installing a parser tool called Gray Matter, and the way that we can install that in our project is simply within, we, we can do this within VS Code. We're gonna open a terminal here that is going to be already within our Next.js blog, and we can do npm install gray-matter, and that should automatically load up the module for us ready to use. Now that we have that in place, we need a specific object within our application that is going to take care of the parsing using this gray matter module. So in order to do that, we can come here to our blog structure and we're gonna create a new folder called lib, uh, which is short for a library. And within this library directory, we're gonna create a file that is going to handle the parsing in specific called post.js. So gonna add a new file here, posts in plural, dot JS. Now we can head over to the learn documentation because there are some code snippets here that we can just simply copy paste and I'll just 
briefly explain these right after we paste them here. So what's essentially happening in this bit of code is that we are importing some modules from the file system and from the gray matter module in order to be able to read the contents of our markdown files. And then through gray matter, what we are able to do is we are able to convert that into something that we will be passing on to our homepage in index.js where we'll be able to easily identify the title and the date of publication of each of those to reflect them on the homepage in a specific section. In order for us to reference this data in our index.js file, the first thing we have to do is an import. So let's head over to our index.js and let's get things started by doing a simple import. Remember the squiggly brackets here and this is gonna be the name of the function itself that is within the file we just created. So in this case, it would be get sorted post data. So let's go ahead and do that. And now let's just make sure to set up the right path for this. So this will be from and then dot dot slash lib slash posts. And now we can hit save just for that piece right there, uh, just so we're able to know that we can access that data in the first place. And now we can apply the static generation to this page right here, such that whenever we are loading the index.js on the browser, we're gonna be doing static generation to pre-render all the data we need for our website. And the way to do that is through a function called get static props, which essentially is gonna take care of handling the static generation at build time. And it's going to take all of the dependencies that you need for your application and make them available as props that you can then reference in the React component or JS file that you're in, right? So for that, I'm just simply gonna copy paste this async function here for get static props. I'm gonna lower the brightness here a little bit. And I'm gonna make sure to pass that before the function here. So there it is. So now we have the get static props, which is going to have an all post data that is being a reference of the data that is being parsed and delivered to us through the, through the library file that we just created earlier. And then what it's gonna do is gonna make a return here for us of props with that const all props data that contains all that information. So now we have that in place, gonna hit save. And now that we have this in place, we can move forward by introducing this data into the homepage. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is make sure that we are referencing all post data as props inside our home function here. So I'm just gonna simply copy paste that object right there. And now that we have all post data inside our home component here, the last bit is to simply create a section that is going to be just right underneath this one. And for that, I'm gonna be copying this snippet here from the learn documentation, which simply is going to be applying a block title. As you can see in H2, there's a couple of uh, CSS styling from our utility CSS file we created in the previous video. And within that, there's gonna be a mapping of the title, the ID, and the date for each of our blog posts. So if we just go ahead and copy that and insert it underneath the section here, and I hit save, and now I go back to my local host, there you go. As you can see, we've got our blog title, we have the title of each of our blog posts, as well as the ID and the day that got posted. And this, by the way, is a direct reference to the metadata that we had defined in our markdown components. So we've successfully used static generation to pre-render data into our index.js file using get static props and passing that on as props to the component itself. And that is all for today. In the next video, what we're gonna be doing is applying dynamic routes so that when users that are navigating your block will be wanting to click into any of these to read further. They will have a link to the appropriate page using a dynamic route that will look somewhat like this. 
and that way people will be able to navigate between your blog posts. As usual, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and let me know below if you have any questions or comments related to anything that we covered in this video. I hope you're well and stay safe. I will catch you in the next one.